Hey everyone, today we'll be diving in the world of ControlNet with the focus on the Scribble extension. So what's ControlNet first? Text-to-image generation involves the use of a pre-trained diffusion model to generate some images from text. Now, this diffusion model is pre-trained on billions of images. And when we input the text, sometimes the output doesn't really match what we intended. And that is where ControlNet comes in. ControlNet was introduced by Zhang and Co in the paper adding conditional control to text-to-image diffusion models. And this was introduced to enhance the performance of the pre-trained diffusion model. In particular, what ControlNet does give us more control over the output by adding another neural network model, which is ControlNet, to the pre-trained diffusion model. So with ControlNet, we can influence the original diffusion model to generate outputs according to specific conditions, like a person in a specific pose, and so on and so forth. Now, I won't go into many details, but I really, really recommend you to read the paper. It's quite interesting, mainly because it goes into details and gives you some examples on all these ControlNet extensions that have been developed. And just to give you an overview, ControlNet extensions are up to eight. You have Kenny, I'm gonna read them because I don't remember. So you have Kenny, that normal open port scribble semantic segmentation, MLSD and HED. There is a lot to talk about each of them. So in this video, we are going to focus on scribble. ControlNet scribble has gained a lot of attention lately because of its ability to generate stunning beautiful images based on simple sketches. So now we are going into stable diffusion and we'll see how to use Scribble and I'm going to use this image from a splash. So let's dive in. This is the main interface of stable diffusion. I'm using a Google Colab to run it because it's way quicker than running it locally and also it saves space. So when we work with Scribble, we want to be in the text to image page and ControlNet extensions were trained using the version 1.5. So I would really, really recommend to use that model. Now, when you open stable diffusions, you have a lot of options here. It's quite scary how many they are, but let's go step by step and see how to build a nice picture from a drawing. So the first thing we want to do in this case is to go in the control net section. And what you can see here is that you can drop your image. You can upload your image into the stable diffusion. Or if you go a little bit lower, you can create blank canvas. Here you go. And you can start drawing something with this brush. You can change the brush size so it's really up to you what you want to use. Now, in my case, I'm going to use the picture I downloaded from a splash. So I'm going to close this. And this is the picture I chose. So once we have our sketch or drawing uploaded or ready to be transformed in something nicer, we can enable. You have to tick enable to use ControlNet. Otherwise, stable diffusion, when you press generate, it will just consider the prompt, it's not gonna consider the picture you uploaded. So enable. And then in my case, I have a white background. So we need to invert input color. It tells you here, invert colors if your image has white background. So it has, so I'm gonna invert colors. Then let's go a little bit lower. We have other option here. We have the free processor. It's used for pre-processing the input image. So for detecting edges, depth, and normal maps. You have different options here. Usually it should match the model you want to use, which is Scribble in our case, but you can also use none. And in this case, the input image is used as the control map. So for now, I'm going to use none. And then for the model, you have all the control net extension models. And what we want to use is the Scribble one. We wait, you can choose how much the final output should be compared to the original image. So a lower weight means that you will have a little 
bit a different image from the original one but if you increase the weight it's gonna give you a more similar image to the input guidance start and guidance end gives you the option to choose where to start using your image as an input and where to end it then you have the resize mode this is quite important and it's connected to canvas width and height for the width and the height i usually use the original picture with an 8 and you can see that going into the main picture so this is my original picture i right click on that and then get info and here it will tell me the dimension they are 3335 4447 so i'm not gonna use this large dimensions i divide them by five for example and then if i do that i should get so this is just the resolution of the image we want to use as an input now regarding what we want to get as an output we need to go up in the previous section here and we need to look at this so in this case it means that the output you are gonna get is gonna be a square which is fine if you want a square, but always make sure that in here you are going to use scale to fit because it's gonna scale your picture from a rectangular shape to a square. If you had just resize, your picture from a rectangular shape is gonna squeeze and you're not gonna get a very nice picture. We're gonna see this during the video. Actually, let's have a look at them now. I'm gonna leave all of the other options as they are. Something very good we can do to compare images is to use the X, Y, Z plot. Given that we have a lot of options uh, and I don't know, you can play with them many times and you will get uh, a lot of results, it can be then difficult to compare all of the different options. So this X, Y, Z plot is quite useful because it allows you to compare the outputs you generate using different options for the same tool. For example, we go here, we choose X, Y, Z plot. And then we can choose resize mode. Where is it? Here. And then if we press here, it's going to give us all of the options which are just resize, scale to fit and envelope. For now, we leave Y and Z with nothing. We press generate and let's see what comes out. You will have noticed that I didn't write a script at all. Why? So ideally from the original paper with control net extensions, you don't need actually to write a prompt because the model is going to understand what to output just based on the image you are giving as an input. But in some cases, maybe you want to add more details uh, uh, for the background or the colors, so you may want to use it. But let's have a look at this for now without it. So if you go into your Collab Notebook or into your terminal, you will see the code running. And here it's telling me X, Y, Z plot will create three images on this grid, three by one. And then we can see here the preprocessor we used and then the model we chose, which is Scribble. And also you can see the generation of the output. And this is the first output from what we did. We didn't use any prompt, but the model generated a picture just considering the input image. Obviously it's not the best. I think that we need to add in this case some other details in the prompt. We can do that. But something that I would like to show you is this resize mode. So in the first case where we have just resized, as I said before, the, the image is really, really shrinked. It doesn't really look like the original image because from a rectangular, the model basically squeezed the image to be into a square. In the case of scale to fit and envelope, they seem to be the same. We'll see other results later. So. Now, let's decide that we don't want a square, but we want the output to have the same dimensions of the input. So we are going to change this to 667 and 889. 
And let's see now what happened. Let's also add a prompt description so we can maybe have a nicer result. We can write a majestic black dog, realistic, detailed, cinematic for the light, and 8K so we have a better resolution. And then in the negative prompt, maybe we can say ugly, low, words, some really basic characteristics. And then we can press generate. So let's see this example. Maybe the difference between inner fit and outer fit is clearer. Okay, and this is the result. We are not quite there yet, but now the difference between the inner fit and the outer fit is quite understandable. So considering this to be the text to image settings and this to be the control net image settings, the just resize is exactly the same as the inner fit because we are using the same resolution for both the text to image settings and the control net image settings. We are using the exactly the same, which is 67889. With the scale to fit the inner fit, the model is going to fit the contronet image inside the text to image with an 8, while with the envelope, the outer fit, it's going to happen the opposite. So the model is going to fit the text to image with an 8 inside the contronet image. Now we are going to remove outer fit and just resize, and we are going to play around with the other options. We go back to the x, y, z plot. And we're going to change this maybe to steps, this to CFG scale, and what else we can use? Oh, and the preprocessor. So let's have a look at different preprocessors here. Now, let's go one by one, the steps. So if you go here on top, you have sampling steps. This is what we want to change. By the way, if you over the tools, it's going to tell you what they are. Not all of them, but most of them they do. And in this case, it tells you that how many times to improve the generated image iteratively. So usually the higher is the number of sampling steps, the more iterations you have. And ideally you should get a better image, but it's not always the case. The downside of increasing the sampling steps is that the model will generate the picture very slowly. So usually I use a sampling step number around 20 and 30. So let's use 20 and 30. Then let's have a look at the CFG scale. The CFG scale tells you how much the image you generate should correspond to the prompt description you are inputting. And if you want to have more creative results, you can decrease the CFG scale. If you want results more aligned to the prompt description, you should use a higher one. Also in this case, it's very difficult to understand which number is the best for what you really want. So also in this case, I'm going to use the X, Y, Z, Plot. So let's use, I don't know, 10 and 15 just to start and then we can maybe change them if we don't like them. And then we can, in the Z-type dimension, we can use the preprocessor. So we see how the steps and the CFG scale changes for each preprocessor. We can use none, scribble and fake scribble. Where fake scribble is just like the normal scribble, but what happened is that ControlNet is used to create the sketch from the uploaded image. So the result will be a little bit different. If you click here, you will have all of the options you can find in here, all of them. Obviously we don't want to run all of them, otherwise it will take ages. So I'm just uh, gonna use none. Scribble, which is the one that we are using, and fake Scribble. And then we press generate. This will take a little bit longer to generate because we have many options now. We have 
2 multiplied by 2 options, which is 4, multiplied by 3, which is 12. If we go back into the Collab notebook, we can see here the plot will create 12 images. And then we need to wait a little bit. So, so far it did 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, I think I will pause the video <laughs> and then see you later. And okay, and this is the result from our generation. If we zoom in, we can see we have the steps, the number of steps on the x-axis, the CFG scale on the uh, y-axis, and then you have on the z-axis the preprocessor. And obviously it's a matter of taste, like it depends on what you like, but in my case, so given I'm using the word majestic, maybe I would prefer having a CFG scale of 15 rather than 10, and the number of steps, honestly, both of them look good, so maybe I will go with 20. And looking at the preprocessor, I think I prefer using non-preprocessor, even if also the scribble preprocessor is quite good. I don't like the fake scribble instead. So now let's go back to our stable diffusion. We can then leave this to 20. We can increase the CFG scale to 15. We can use non as preprocessor. And then if we want to continue this process, we can, for example, try in different sampling methods. This can be quite interesting as well. Usually the first one, this one is the best uh, I've, I've ever seen, but you can experiment by your own. You just need to go here and then you select sampler. Then if you click here, you have all of them and then you can pick the one you want. If you want to use just the X, you need to use nothing on the other. And then here you can swap also the axis. So it's, it's quite good. So now I'm not gonna create other options. I think I'm quite happy with what I have. So I'm going to remove this X, Y, Z plot. I'm gonna set this to known. And then I'm going to generate again the picture in this case, it will be just one picture. Okay, I'm not very happy with this, so maybe I can add in the negative from double to not get double faces. And I don't even want to see the teeth, to be honest. So I'm gonna add this, and maybe I can press restore faces. This usually works for human faces, not animals, but it may work sometimes. Sometimes the results you get, it really random, you know. So let's press generate again we have now this picture which is i think it's quite it's quite good it's very similar to the original one if we want to compare the drawing to the final output i'm quite happy with that so i will stick with that so once you're happy with that you can send that to extras and then you can maybe increase the resolution of the image usually a very good one is this one esr gun so you just choose it and press generate and then it will increase the resolution. Another good website I want to show you for increasing the resolution is this one. This is an AI image upscaler. It's uh, under payment if you want to do many upscales, but uh, it's usually free for the first 15 or five. I don't remember exactly, but anyway, it's quite good. I usually use it and you can choose whether to increase the resolution by 200% or 400%. You drop your image here and then you start the process. So last thing, if you wanna see your output, you can just go into Stable Diffusion Web UI in your drive and then outputs, and then you have here different folders where you have your output. If you wanna have a look at the grids, you just click on here, which is text to image grids, you will have folders for the day in which you run the, the grids. Then if you go here, you see those that we run together today. You go into extra images and then you have here the picture. And if you zoom in, the resolution seems very good. So great. Okay, and that's it for today. I hope this was useful. And let me know if you have any issues with that. Hopefully everything will be fine and yeah, that's it.
Have a good rest of the day and see you at the next video. Bye.